there are many, many complex characters in anime. One such character is Charles Dompler. <laughs> Wait a second. His last name is Dompler? Okay, well, that broke my meme. Uh, synth cool memes aside, Charlie is a very prominent character in all of Smiling Friends. And for good reason. Everyone who's watched Smiling Friends no doubt has found moments where they've found themselves in the characters. There's one character I feel the common man could see themselves in the most. It's perhaps a yellow man himself. Yes, I know plenty of people see themselves as Alan, but today we're shining a light on perhaps the best anime character of the last decade, and although you may see yourselves as Charlie, I don't really think you want to be the guy. Charlie is a troubled character. He may seem like a cool Sigma kid you knew from college, but deep down, he's a man running from his issues. Yes, fellow smiling friends, Charlie is one episode away from having a full episode in which he sits on a train for hours ignoring the boss while jamming to Blink-182 or whatever Charlie probably listens to. I'd, I'd assume it's that. Because you see, Charlie is essentially the Shinji of Smiling Friends. Yep, that's right. Which logically makes Mip essentially the Kawaru. Not only did they both share a hotly debated gay scene together, deal with it, they're gay, fuck you, but Mip also helped Charlie out curing his headache and overall mood, only to reveal he's a goddamn creature with ulterior motives. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, so I hope I, out of the 10 of you that stuck around past that intro, I hope you'll enjoy what I have to say, because I want to give my boy Charlie some much needed mental analysis. Seriously, if there's one character in all of Smiling Friends that absolutely needs it, perhaps more than even Pim after the pilot, okay, maybe not the pilot episode's Pim, but it would definitely be Charlie. I swear, it feels like just about every episode we see him progressively more and more aware of just how messed up his world is. Similar to the Don't Hug Me I'm Scared television series, by the way, go check that out, I feel like 99% of people are sleeping on that literal gem of a show, where the lead orange guy is always becoming more and more unhinged, questioning the increasingly unraveling reality of his world, Charlie similarly seems to be constantly losing his mind in one way or another and becoming more and more aware of that. From the very first season where Charlie is tricked by Mip into believing he's something special, but instead was left as whatever the hell this is at the end of the episode, could have been blown up too had they not unraveled the truth of the situation, to the finale episode in which he literally dies by getting crushed into literal goop. It's all downhill. Tell me, what's the first thing you think of when I mention Season 2 Episode 1 of Smiling Friends? Yeah, uh, probably Gwimbly, but I mean, he is pretty iconic as a character. Just, just look at him go. Well, I don't do my iconic victory dance for nothing. Okay, I guess just this once I can do it for nothing. Ew, ew, ew. But the one scene that should stick out to you is the one in which Charlie is continuously psychologically tormented into making this literal hulking monster smile. And what happens after he has a genuine, earnest, sweet moment asking for the dude to smile and free him of his duty? Genuinely smile, please just smile. Dude, I couldn't focus on what you were saying with that thing on your face. I was sick of staring at it. Yeah, that's certainly gonna leave a scar for the guy. He even says as much at the end of the episode. My nose was completely ripped off my face. This was not fun for me at all. Then moving from that episode, it's not hard to see why, when the president of their country is a literal lamb-eating slob who shits himself every two seconds and gives away money to everybody in the country, the guy just up and leaves. Dude had reached his limit. Shifting over to Brother's Egg is where we start to see that he's fully starting to have enough of the chaos, as he just outright monologues about how insane the world is and how much it's stressing him out when he sees an actual homunculus barge out of an egg that was created with human sperm to stop a fight between the two brothers. Yeah, forget H.P. Lovecraft's fear of the unknown and this giant tentacle monster. This is the real thing that would leave you scarred and afraid of your very own existence on this planet. The world we live in stresses me out, dude. Really? Why? Just like never ending constant chaos. No, it, it never lets up. I hate it. I, it's oh, not good. Okay. I mean, I, you didn't like when the man came out of the egg, though? That was kind of nice, wasn't no, it? No, that's what I'm talking about. It's exactly oh, oh what I you mean. didn't like that. Kind of, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Well, it's not. You didn't do it. It's not your fault. Uh, okay. Don't get me started on Charlie's drinking problems. Dude absolutely got sloshed to try and move on from all that trauma he suffered in this cruel, chaotic, uncaring world he currently lives in, where his boss, 
is married to a demon. But perhaps the episode that ultimately showcases Charlie's damn near breaking point was Charlie, Pim, and Bill versus the alien. After being peer pressured into taking alien tar heroin, essentially, and partying all night to alien Tony Hawk, the two aliens tell the boys to destroy an inhabited planet or else they'll be doomed to a fate worse than death. Of course, this turns out all to be a joke by the two aliens with suspiciously similar sounding laughter. We're never able to take you guys back home. <laughs> but nonetheless, the damage has been done. Charlie's demeanor turns into absolute rage as he elbows poor Pim's head out of the way as he argues with the two aliens. Yeah, it, I think it goes without saying that my boy Charlie has been having it pretty rough the last two seasons. Honestly, pretty weird considering he's the cooler head of almost every other character in the show. Truly, Charlie is a character that is on the brink of losing his mind. And if not, he's possibly going to go into a full on Mr. Boss mental break. This leaves me wondering, out of the two characters, Mr. Boss or Charlie, who is the most likely to lose it and end up going full on Nicolas Cage long legs in the next season? Well, all I can say is I hope my boy Charlie gets some much needed time to relax between seasons because he has undoubtedly been tanking a lot of the insanity of this world, perhaps more so than even Pim. But even in the face of all that trauma, Charlie is the epitome of a super chill dude. And that's why he resonates with so many fans, including myself. Unlike Mr. Boss and the fan favorite inside joke, Tyler, Charlie's laid back demeanor and devil may care attitude in the face of the show's chaotic world make him an incredibly relatable and potentially one of the biggest literally me characters of the show. One in which everyone wishes as they could be, but hopefully not on the same level as Rick from Rick and Morty. Jesus. He navigates the absurd situations with a cool head and often acts as the voice of reason among his more eccentric, overly optimistic colleagues. Love you, Pim, but you gotta chill out about loving kids. I love kids! Uh, Pim, I, I would really not be uh, screaming that at the top of your lungs. His chill nature is especially endearing because it contrasts sharply with the madness around him. Whether he's dealing with his bizarre clients or outlandish scenarios, Charlie maintains a sense of humor and calm that's both admirable and comforting. Pim, that genuinely got you. I've never seen you jump like that before. His ability to stay grounded, even facing the show's most surreal moments, provides a much needed balance and often brings a sense of normalcy to otherwise wild narrative. Not only were we abducted by aliens, but I think the aliens that abducted us were also abducted. And now we're inside their ship and they're flying out of our galaxy. Yeah, no freaking dip. I, I could have told you that. I think what actually sets Charlie apart and makes me love him even more than even Mr. Boss and potentially Pim is his subtle level of depth. Beneath his relaxed exterior, there's a hint of vulnerability and complexity, suggesting he's not just coasting through life, but actively coping with its absurdities. Charlie, are you OK? No, I feel like we're going to puke, dude. I, I can't keep doing this to myself. I can't. Something's got to change, brother. This blend of chill and depth makes Charlie a standout character and perhaps even the heart of Smiling Friends, embodying the show's unique blend of humor and humanity. And also, good lord, somebody get this guy some Simon S. Salty stat, because he's gonna need it for the next season. Oh man, I could really go for some salties right now. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to like, subscribe, and most importantly, ding that bell. It helps keep Mr. Boone's viewership afloat now that he's back to getting far less traffic with Smiling Friends Season 2 being complete. Not only will it help the channel out, but it'll put a big smile on Mr. Boone's face. Also, be sure to comment below further characters you might want Mr. Boone to cover. He responds to every comment because he absolutely lives for the discussion online. Have a great day or night, and see you next video.